We will do hadith number one. I heard the messenger of Allah say, actions are judged by motives, niya. So each man will have what he intended. Thus, he whose migration, hijra, was to Allah and his messenger, his migration is to Allah and his messenger. But he whose migration was for, for some worldly thing he might gain, or for a, for a wife he might marry, his migration is that for which he intend, migrated. Uh, yeah, so uh, Imam al nawi rahimahullah is one of the gargantuan figures in Islamic thought. Uh, I, I should have started with that. And his uh, compilation of 40 hadith, it's actually 42 hadith, are almost required for almost every madrasa system in the world. Okay? Uh, so so this, th this 42 hadith is across all... The, the, the Ummah, you know, like I had somebody who was, uh, so, so yeah, let's not belabor the point, but this is one of those compilations that every student, right, and, and what you find with most students, the, if they were going to memorize Hadith, these are the 42 they memorize, okay, and this is the first of that compilation of the, so this is the first Hadith that Imam al nabi Rahim Allah starts, so, so this is, a, uh, again, we've talked about in the Sira about contemporization, contextualization. We talked about the idea of interpretation. Interpretation is to take an idea, an event, or person, or situation, and extract its meaning. What does it mean? Especially in the situation that you are in, right? And so we, uh, uh, the hadith, they're the sayings of Habibullah, right? And for the believer to understand them uh, are, it, it, it's, it's compulsory, right? So when we talk about operationalize a sirah, that cannot be done without operationalizing understanding of the hadith. And we are not qualified. Let, 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 me, let me just, I am not qualified. So I don't want anyone to misunderstand. I don't want to use the we and it be misunderstood, right? Asad Koshal is not qualified to talk about the daif or strength of a hadith, okay? But these 42 are, like I said, a crossing. So what we were looking to do is uh, and this is the first one we have, we have others, say, so how can we create an instructional design that will, inshallah, bring out the meaning and understanding of the hadith, right? In a unique way, in a contemporized way, okay? That's the challenge we were trying to address. So, so how is this hadith the following? How is this hadith a challenge? What is this hadith challenging us with? Okay. Very good. Intentions must be sincere. The challenge of this hadith is intentions must be sincere. Next, what is the connectivity of this hadith? Mm -hmm. Actions must be connected to sincere intentions. Acts of worship, such as prayer, fasting, and general acts must be coupled with sincerity and good intention. There must be a connection. And lastly, what is the creativity of this hadith? What's creative about this hadith? Yeah, see, you're thinking out loud, and this is exactly what we want you to do. So here... Intention ties to voluntary actions and wants. Determination, one, inspiring to do something. So we look at every hadith and we say, what is a challenge? What is a connectivity? And what is a creativity of this hadith? We don't read the hadith in Arabic and then in English and then give some commentary on it. This is the intellectual infrastructure. We want you to think deep and hard about what is the challenge, what is the connectivity, and what is the creativity of the hadith.
to extract and to pull out its meaning. And the reason for selecting these three C's is all stories in all cultures are these three types of stories. There's no fourth. The challenge story is a David versus Goliath story, right? The connectivity stories are the love stories or connection to a place, an idea, a person. And creativity stories are what stories? Solving a long-standing problem or a mental breakthrough. So all stories fall in these three. There is no fourth. So we said, let's look at each hadith from a challenge perspective, from a connectivity perspective, and from a creative perspective. So what we're looking to do is say, what's the challenge here? What's the connectivity here? And what is the creativity here? Okay, first part. And this is the first time you're seeing something like this, so uh, it's fine. Like, just very similar to the Sira. By the second, third, you'll be like, yeah, I, I can extract this. This stuff is not far out in left field. But how do you render meaning to something? Hmm? How do you interpret something? And it is by scratching your brain, okay? Then we say, why do people believe? We saw this, I think, yesterday. There are only four reasons why people believe. So of the 42 hadith, six or eight are situational. And then in those situational ones, we do this analysis. So here, faith. We believe in Allah and the Prophet, Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. This faith should govern our intentions with power in our actions. Simple enough. Parents and friends believe. Your social circle believes. In this case, Relationships can help you learn actions. However, for actions to be of value, they must be preceded by intention, at least for the akhirah. Experience leads us to believe. When we act a certain way, our experience with good intention strengthens our faith, which in turn enhances the spiritual effect of our actions. And lastly, we trust the authority. It is very important for us to have mentors and groups that encourage self-reflection of all actions. So you look at this, and again, we talked about this yesterday, where for most of human society, history, one and two were enough. You were born in a village, people in that village were generally the same religion, and your social circle, your family, friends, extended family, clan was the same religion, and that was it. Uh, Drew University actually has done a study recently. It's the first time in human history that within the same nucleus family, people are different religions. The husband is Jewish, the wife is Roman Catholic, and the kids are usually agnostic, okay? That's a new phenomenon in human society. And generally, but we'll ask this on the Hadith, okay? So this, this one is very similar. And so here's a situational analysis. Reasons to believe. So of those six to eight Hadith that are situational, this is the intellectual infrastructure. Number one, what happened? What happened here? Who would like to engage with me? What happened here in this hadith? Yeah, in the hadith. What happened here? Give me a description of what actually happened. What was the event? Huh? Yeah. Yeah, a person made hijra. Exactly. So first thing, and again, this is another tool of analysis and inquiry. I, I would encourage you to write this down. A person made hijra for umukais, rodialanha. That is why he made hijra. Why did he make hijra? For umukais. She was a Muslim. And he makes hijra for her. Okay? That's the first thing. Understand the event. Okay? Now, what's the second thing? How did it happen? Hmm? Well, he went with the companions to Medina, an act which many of the other companions performed. He was one of the 70. Oh, okay, sorry. He was one of the... He was one of them. Jazakallah. Okay, no, no, see, see. First, what happened? How did it happen? 
Who can anticipate what the third question is going to be? Very good. See, you know this stuff, okay? My job is to just extract it out of you. Oh, okay. All right, inshallah. Okay, see. All right, that's good. Mashallah, very good. Okay, yeah, I did, I did mention this yesterday. Why did it happen? His act was the same, but his intention was radically different. Therefore, he's not awarded the benefits of hijrah like the others. So, first, it's the what. What transpired? Explain to me the event. Next, explain to me how the event unfolded. What is the simplest of the questions? The how is more complicated. Okay? And then the why is a reason for the reason. Well, why did he go? Well, he went. And lastly, what is unique about this situation? A person within a group doing the same act, but the impact of the act or action may not have the same results or outcome. Why? Because of intentionality. Because of intentionality. Now, Hydra is not just an event in the Sira. We start our calendar from Hydra. We don't start our calendar from Wahi. We don't start our calendar from the birth of the Prophet, peace be upon him. We don't start our calendar from Ghazwa Badr. We don't start our calendar even from Fatih Mecca. We start our calendar from Hijra. Where what happens? We talked about it yesterday. The Prophet, peace be upon him, becomes a political and spiritual leader of non muslims Okay? He's a spiritual leader of the believers. But in Yathrib, he, he's a spiritual and political leader of the believers. But of the non Muslims, he's their political leader only. We start our calendar from that time period a multicultural city. Because Islam has the capacity. Because Islam has the capacity to solve the worldly problems of people who are not even members of the faith. That is from where we start our calendar. So we don't start our calendar from the death of the Prophet, peace be upon him. We don't start it from Fatih Mecca. We don't start it from his birth. We don't start it from the first hedge. Huh? The first hedge made after whom? How many centuries? To the one God? We don't start it from that. At the Kaaba that Abraham alayhi salam built. So, what's unique? Situational analysis, okay? Situational analysis. What happened, how it happened, why it happened, and what's unique? Now, Shelly, you'll recognize this instructional design. I hope I don't get disciplined again. Okay. How or why are these hadith relevant? What's relevant about this? It is the axis of Islam. Muhammad Sallallahu said, these are only by intention. That's it, Colossus. Doesn't get simpler, right? At the same time, doesn't get simpler and it doesn't get more complicated. Foundation of the entire religion. It's the axis of the religion. Relevance. Who knows what the next one, next uh, animation? The distinctiveness. What is distinctive specifically about this hadith, but by extension, this religion? 
Ustad Dathiyah told us on Friday. He told us. The religion is distinctive, don't water it down. The Quran is distinctive, don't water it down. And it's just that he didn't have the time. He would have said the Hadith are distinctive, don't water it down. Okay? All right? He just didn't have time. He, he's trying to put a PhD thesis in a 25-minute khutbah. Yes. What is distinctive? What is distinctive? What is distinctive here is, is only any work judged by Allah exclusively based on intention. The creators of the heavens and the earth judges exclusively on intention. He knows what's in your heart. It is not based on quantity or quality. It is based on intention. And this is very key. I remember this, even the young people like. That for a believer, the intentions are always better than the actual deeds. This is a very unique principle in religious tradition. We intend to recite Quran for an hour. We get tired. We only do 20 minutes. But we get the rewards for what? For the hour. What a powerful concept in religious tradition. You get reward for the intentionality. But obviously the intentionality is genuine, right? So this is a very unique principle in religious tradition. Look how distinct this idea is. You can intend to do it, not be able to follow through with it, or partially follow through it, but you still get the reward. So for a believer, the deeds are always better than the action. So this is what we mean by empowering the young. Allah is always watching over you. And not just the fear component that he's watching you doing something wrong. No, he's there to protect you. He's your wali. The intentionality. Okay. Lastly, what's the next? Huh? How does a hadith drive purpose? So here. Define the worship intended. Do the angels or Allah really need to know when we're about to make wudu, we're about to make wudu? Well, why do we verbalize it? Discern whether a particular act is one of worship, of worldly habit, custom, or motivation. Knowledge of the doer and what he or she is doing and the purpose behind the action. So, let's ask a question here. Why do we make wudu? Why do we make wudu? Huh? Okay. To clean ourselves, it's a hukum, okay? Why do we make wudu? Okay, so generally the standard answer is do we make it to pray, right? We have to be clean in front of the Almighty. Very good. All of this is accurate. Now, what if I were to argue? Because generally, Muslim society people associate wudu kiya namaz ke liye. That's the reason why you make wudu. Okay? Uh, I, okay. But it's deeper, it's just purification. Now, there is a study from University of Toronto that says washing your hands is enough. Now, let me explain this. Okay, don't jump on me yet. They did a study of college students. And they found that if you wash your hands and then sit down at a laptop versus another control group that didn't wash their hands and sat down at a laptop, and they were given moral questions about drug use, about promiscuity, about those things, they found the students would actually just wash their hands and sat down with the laptop. When they fulfilled the questionnaire, they were more moralistic in their answers. <laughs> I can send you the findings. That is just for washing hands. So there was a reason our grandmother who didn't, who, who didn't memorize Bukhari used to tell us, Bete, vazuka begar, ghar se nikalte. What that means, Brother Yusuf, is grandson, don't leave the house without wudu. Wudu is not linked only to prayer. So we diminish even wudu. The purpose. What is the purpose of wudu? No, do not diminish wudu and link it only to prayer. 
And now you have scientific studies saying if you wash your hands, and you're a college student, and even a non-Muslim, and you're taking a study, and there's data, and this is they, they don't sample 10 people. They said they found that people who wash their hands and sat down were going to be more moralistic about promiscuity. Everyone knows what this means. Let drug use and oh, the moral type of questions, even consumption of alcohol. So wudu is a shield. Hmm. So now, types of knowledge. So we do the first, we do the C's. What is the challenge? What is the connectivity? What is the creativity? Then we ask, do we do the situational analysis? Then we ask RDP. The relevance, distinctiveness, and purpose for the hadith. And what you find in the instructional design, you will find overlap. Many times, what we say is the challenge is also the purpose. Fine. But we're just forcing, uh, we're just forcing the participant, the learner, to go on a journey with us to look at this from a different perspective. Next. Three types of knowledge. Yes, I'm, I'm under a time constraint here. So, yes. Go ahead. Sure. I was thinking in a different way also. The hadith of the student. Zat and Sifat. Mm-hmm. So when you take in a Zat and Sifat, when you say RDP, Sifat being Hadith being Salam, and RDP. Yes. It, it, yeah. And, and this is where, so this is our instructional design, and obviously it has been approved. I mean, I've had people who have a PhD from Yale and, and, and looked at this and said, wow, this, this is. This so is both that and Zafat is connected. It cannot yes. be separated. It can't be. Yeah, you can't so, draw the you disconnect. Are talking about Sira, then Hadith, it cannot be separated out. Exactly. It has to be yes, very good. See, I'm just trying to create a framework. Okay, so next, we look at the types of knowledge. There are many types of knowledge. For the purposes of this instructional design, we focused on three. Declarative, procedural, and conditional. What is declarative knowledge? Declarative knowledge is what is known about something. Hmm? What do you need to know about this hadith? So someone may say this is overkill. No, but we're trying to say, what do you need to know? You need to know intentions are the basis of Islam. This was a physical migration. In Sunday school, we understood it primarily as a physical migration. That they left their homes, they left there, they were persecuted, and they went to a different city in order to freely practice their religion. That's how we understood it in Sunday school. And the spiritual migration component was not as emphasized, but it's very important, right? Leaving sins and what is prohibited and return to Allah is part of hijra. Contention out. That's what you need to know. If I were to say, what do you need to know? This is what it is. Procedural is how do you do something? How do you do it? And this is, inshallah, consciously think about intention, verbalize internally before the action. So this is what we say. We're getting ready to. Salah. Mira Radha had, you know, the Masparnika. You know, I mean, we say this. As if you're standing in the masjid and the angel doesn't know, the angel knows. We still verbalize it. Hmm? That's a procedure. And then what is the condition? What is the conditional knowledge here? Leaving behind a life of, of disobedience and sin is always a religious obligation. So this one's very easy. This you have to do all the time. Okay? So when do you apply this? This? All the time. So then we look at this, we say, challenge, connectivity, creativity, the situational analysis, because this is one of the situations of the six or the eight. And the reason I'm saying six or eight, because some of them, they're actually events that the Prophet ﷺ is not like this one. It's he's speaking of an event. Then we do the RDP. What is the relevance, distinctive, purpose? And then we say, what is declarative, procedural, or conditional knowledge? To really force ourselves to look at this timeless wisdom from multiple, multiple perspectives. How do we operationalize the hadith? This is not sufficient, amount of the niyat. Not in the era in which we live. Then we go on to, oops, sorry. Continue to review your motivations and safeguard against shaitan to enter the heart and corrupt your intentions and destroy good deeds. Continually. Hmm? Okay. Then we put this up. The same imagery. 
Imprint this on your head. Whatever you believe is going to power everything else. So this slide never changes. This slide never changes. Know what it is. Know how to do it, how to act on it, and know when to act on it. Okay? And we put it even in more simple terms. Have the knowledge about it. Then you do the practice action. Then expect the impact. So these are very standard. Okay, then, then anything does that not fit in the instructional design is put here. So we hear that Al Bukhari, Rahimullah, began his collection with this hadith. Muslim placed this hadith at the conclusion of his chapter on jihad, on his chapter of jihad. So Al Shafi included in seventy subjects a fiqh that contains a third of knowledge. Imam Shafi, this hadith encompasses half of knowledge. So these are just things like Imam Ahmed said, this hadith covers one third of knowledge, not Islamic knowledge. Imam Ibn Daud said, this hadith is half of Islam. So we put these points here, okay? So here we put the migration, physical, spiritual. Migration, migrating to Medina was difficult. Leaving your home, your family, your wealth. You migrated under fear and persecution. Muhammad Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam chooses a very difficult act to convey the importance of intentionality. Mention, very difficult act, done with pure intention, some act done for worldly intention. An analogy, action is like that of the soul in the body. It's a teachable moment. The Prophet's ability to use a scenario to teach is unmatched. Okay, so, so we see, so, and like one scholar, we showed this and he said, okay, generally the instructional design is people read the hadith in Arabic, then they read the hadith in English, and then they basically go to the other points. And everyone says, wah, wah. Okay, so, and then, okay, then we have uh, the reflective questions. Here we have seven. Number one, an example you think conveys a plaza lesson in this hadith to your life. Two, one action item you want to change or improve as a result of understanding this hadith. So some of these you're going to find a little similar, five of them to the three. What is stimulating and inspirational about the hadith? Four, how did this hadith help you identifying obstacles to preventing you from modifying your behavior. Bring it into your life, okay? Bring it into your life. Five, how did this hadith help alter the way you think? When so much of religion is rituals, which people do not understand, right? Six, after studying this hadith, what does it reveal about the type of person I am? Okay. Then last question is, why, how, what in this hadith will help continually clarify what's important to me? So this is the seventh thing. And so these are the same questions on all set, all of the hadith. And again, we have a total of 17, but we've, we do the instructional design in a, in, a, in a way, right? You ask these on all of the 42 hadith. Like, we're, we have, we're building on other hadith curriculum and these are these. Okay. Okay, and then we, we do put some of the Arabic keywords. Okay. And so, to do this properly, we would need an hour and a half of the hadith, right? To break you into groups and say, okay, let's think about this, how do I understand this? And if it just moves the needle a little bit, we've done our job. No, well, the hadith are 42, yeah. right? And the thing is, say, hey, hadith is Jibreel, you need at least four hours just on that one hadith. But you see, th th the point is this, is once you understand difference between intellectual foundation and then intellectual infrastructure, you have the tools to fly on your own. And I think I've mentioned this four or five times. One of our challenges is that Islamic instruction in many cases is very trivia based and it is very events based. So 
once you under, you know, these seven questions, they're not random. Even a neurologist looked at these questions and said, hmm, yes. Because a neurologist looked at this curriculum and said, this is the first curriculum I've seen that retrains the brain. Islamic curriculum. And he's a very religious person. Yes. Yes. Because especially in the age of distraction, it is incumbent upon us to always say what is important to me. Because the machine is big, it's overwhelming. And you have to say what is important to me? What's important to me? What's important to me? When you are living in an environment that is saying the, 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 the comfort is there. Right. For example, one reason that people interact less with neighbors is very simply due to the air conditioner. That before the air conditioner, even in the United States, people sat on their French porches, interacted, and socialized with their neighbor. Now, I sit in, in 70 degree control to room, and they sit in their control room. Right? Right? And so there's less social interaction. Right? So it becomes incumbent upon us to continually clarify what's important. And we ask these, these are the standard questions, right? Because we've tried to, uh, uh, we try to create structured inquiry. Because we don't want to change these questions, because if we could change them, right, for every hadith. But if you ask these, it'll be enough. Uh, definitely for lay people, but even for, so yes, I, I, okay. So, so this is, this is where we're at. So I'll put up the hadith as the sister requested. I'll put the hadith up. Okay, what other comments? Because we do have to end. I'm, you know, we, we have a flight to catch. Uh, no, the summarized version is Amal ibn Niyad. That all actions are judged by intention. All actions are judged by intention. And so, what, what we're saying is, we developed this to, 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 to really try to look at the ancient wisdom in a contemporary way. To say, what's the challenge here? What's the connectivity here? What's the creativity here? What's relevant? What's distinctive? What's purposeful? What are the reflector? What do you need to know? What's declarative? What's procedural? What's conditional? And we sat for countless hours. So, okay, what con in instructional design or intellectual infrastructure can we create? Of which we can help interpretation and contextualize and contemporize. The hadith. And obviously not just these 40. Okay. So inshallah, any other questions? Okay. So it's already 224. So can you... So inshallah, it was an honor to be here for the couple of days. Hopefully you benefited. And...